Part 8 of Time Crime by H. Beam Piper. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Time Crime, Part 8. The whole thing had ended within thirty seconds. For about half as long, everybody waited, poised in a sort of action vacuum, for something else to happen. Dalla had dropped the shoulder bag with which she had clubbed the prisoner's needler out of his hand and caught up the fallen weapon. When she saw that the man was down and motionless, she laid it aside and began picking up the glittering or silken trifles that had spilled from the burst bag. Val retrieved his own weapon, glanced over it, and holstered it. Sothran Barth, the lieutenant in charge of the landing stage, was bawling orders, and men were coming out of the ready room and piling into vehicles to pursue the air car which had brought the assassins. Barth, Val called. Have you a hypodermic and a sleep drug ampule? Well, give this boy a shot. He's only impact stunned. Be careful of him. He's important. He glanced around the landing stage. Fact is, he's all we have to show for this business. Then he stooped to help Dalla gather her things, picking up a few of them, a lighter, a tiny crystal perfume flask, miraculously unbroken, a face powder box which had sprung open and spilled half its contents. He handed them to her while Sothran Barth bent over the prisoner and gave him an injection, then went to the body of the other pseudo-policeman, forcing open his mouth. In his cheek, still unbroken, was a second capsule, which he added to the first. Tortha Karf was watching him. "'Same gang that killed that Cholera slaver on Esseron Sector?' he asked. Of course, exactly the same general procedure. Let's have a look at the other one. The man in proletarian dress must have had his capsule between his molars when he had been killed. It was broken, and there was a brownish discoloration and chemical odor in his mouth. Second time we've had a witness killed off under our noses, Tortha Karf said. We're going to have to smarten up in a hurry. Here's one of us who doesn't have too much. Val said, nodding toward Dalla. She knocked a needler out of one man's hand, and we took him alive. The force owes her a new shoulder bag. She spoiled that one using it for a club. Best shoulder bag we can find you, Dalla, Tortha Karf promised. You're promoted herewith to Special Chief's Assistant Special Assistant. You know, this organization murder section is good. They could kill anybody. It wouldn't be long before they assign a squad to us. Blast it. I don't want to have to go around bodyguarded like a fourth-level dictator, but... A detective came out of the control room and approached. Screen call for you, sir, he told Tortha Karf. One of the news services wants a comment on a story they've just picked up that we've illegally arrested Councilman Salgath and are holding him incommunicado and searching his apartment. That's the organization, Val said. They don't know how their boys made out. They're hoping we'll tell them. No comment, Tortha Karf said. Call the girl on my switchboard and tell her to answer any other new service calls. We have nothing to say at this time, but there will be a public statement at... at 23.30, he decided after a glance at his watch. That'll give us time to agree on a publicity line to adopt. Lieutenant Sothran, take charge up here. Get all these bodies out of sight somewhere, including those of Councilman Salgath and Detective Malthor. Don't let anybody talk about this. Put a blackout on the whole story. Val, you and Dalla, and... Oh, you over there. Take the prisoner down to my office. Sothran, any reports from any of the cars that were chasing that fake police car? Verkan Vall and Dalla were sitting behind Tortha Karf's desk. Vall was issuing orders over the intercom and talking to the detectives who had remained at Salgath Trod's apartment by visiscreen. Dalla was sorting over the things she had spilled when her bag had burst. They both looked up as Tortha Karf came in and joined them. "'The prisoner's still under the drug,' the chief said. "'He'll be out for a couple of hours.' The psych techs want to let him come out of it naturally and sleep naturally for a while before they give him a hypno. He's not a surf sec prole. 
uncircumcised, never had any synthoenzyme shots or immunizations, and none of the longevity operations or grafts. Same thing for the two stiffs, and no identity records on any of the three. The men at Salgath's apartment say that his housekeeper and his two servants checked out through the house conveyor for Surf Sec 165 at about 18.30, Val said. There's a Prol Entertainment Center on that timeline. I suppose Salgath gave them the evening off before he called you. Tortha Karf nodded. I suppose you ordered them picked up. The news services are going wild about this. I had to make a preliminary statement to the effect that Salgath Trod was not arrested, came to headquarters of his own volition, and is under no restraint whatever. Except, of course, a slight case of rigor mortis, Dalla added. Did you mention that, Chief? No, I didn't. Tortha Karf looked as though he had quinine in his mouth. Val, how in blazes are we going to handle this? We ought to keep Salgoth's death hushed up as long as we can, Val said. The organization doesn't know positively what happened here. That's why they're handing out tips to the news services. Let's try to make them believe he's still alive and talking. How can we do it? There ought to be somebody on the force close enough to Salgoth Trod's anthropometric specifications that our cosmeticians could work him over into a passable impersonation. Our story is that Salgoth is on Paul term, undergoing narco-hypnosis. We will produce an audio-visual of him as soon as he is out of narco-hip. That will give us time to fix up an impersonator. We'll need a lot of sound recordings of Salgoth Trod's voice, of course. I'll take care of the home timeline end of it. As soon as we get you an impersonator, you go to work with him. Now, let's see whom we can depend on to help us with this. Lavranth Roke, of course, Home Timeline Section of the Paratime Code Enforcement Division, and... Birkenval and Dalla and Tortha Karf and four or five others looked across the desk and to the end of the room as the telecast screen broke into a shifting light pattern and then cleared. The face of the announcer appeared, a young woman. And now we bring you the statement which Chief Tortha of the Paratime Police has promised for this time. This portion of the program was audio-visually recorded at Paratime Police headquarters earlier this evening. Tortha Karf's face appeared on the screen. His voice began an announcement of how Executive Counsel Salgath Trod had called him by visiphone, admitting to complicity in the recently discovered paratemporal slave trade. Here is a recording of Councilman Salgath's call to me from his apartment to my office at 1945 this evening. The screen image shattered into light shards and rebuilt itself. Salgoth trod at his desk in the library of his apartment, the brandy goblet and the needler within reach appeared. He began to speak. From time to time the voice of Tortha Karf interrupted, questioning or prompting him. You understand that this confession renders you liable to psycho-rehabilitation? Tortha Karf asked. Yes, Councilman Salgoth understood that. And you agree to come voluntarily to Paratime Police Headquarters, and you will voluntarily undergo narco-hypnotic interrogation? Yes, Salgath Trod agreed to that. I am now terminating the playback of Councilman Salgath's call to me, Tortha Karf said, reappearing on the screen. At this point, Councilman Salgath began making a statement about his criminal activities, which we have on record because he named a number of his criminal associates, whom we have no intention of warning, this portion of Councilman Salgoth's call cannot at this time be made public. We have no intention of having any of these suspects escape, or of giving their associates an opportunity to murder them to prevent their furnishing us with additional information. Incidentally, there was an attempt made on the landing stage of Paratime Police Headquarters to murder Councilman Salgoth when he was brought here guarded by Paratime police officers. 
he went on to give a colorful, and as far as possible truthful, account of the attack by the two pseudo-policemen and their pseudo-prisoner. As he told it, however, all three had been killed before they could accomplish their purpose, one of them by Salgoth Trod himself. The image of Tortha Karf was replaced by a view of the three assassins lying on the landing stage. They all looked dead, even the one who wasn't. There was nothing to indicate that he was merely drugged. Then, one after another, their faces were shown in close-up, while Tortha Karf asked for close attention and memorization. We believe that these men were fifth-level proles. We think that they were under hypnotic influence or obeying post-hypnotic commands when they made their suicidal attack. If any of you have ever seen any of these men before, it is your duty to inform the Paratime Police." That ended it. Tortha Karf pressed a button in front of him and the screen went dark. The spectators relaxed. Well. Nothing like being sincere with the public, is there?" Della commented. I'll remember this the next time I tune in a management public statement. In about five minutes, one of the bureau chiefs said, all hell is going to break loose. I think the whole thing is crazy. I hope you have somebody who can give a convincing impersonation, Lavranth Roke said. Yes, a field agent named Kostran Golf. Tortha Karf said. We ran the personal description cards for the whole force through the machine. Kostran checked within one-twentieth of one percent. He's on police terminal now, coming by rocket from Ravanon equivalent. We ought to have the whole thing ready for telecast by 1730 tomorrow. He can't learn to imitate Salgoth's voice convincingly in that time, with all the work the cosmeticians will have to be doing on him, Dalla said. Make up a tape of Salgas' own voice, out of that pile of recordings we got at his apartment, and what we can get out of the news file," Vol said. We have phoneticists who can split syllables and splice them together. Kostrin will deliver his speech in dumb show, and will dub the sound in and telecast them as one. I've messaged Palterm to get to work on that. They can start as soon as we have the speech written. The more it succeeds now, the worse the blow-up will be when we finally have to admit that Salgoth was killed here tonight," the chief inter-officer coordinator, Zasta Alv, said. We better have something to show the public to justify that. Yes, we had, Tortha Karf agreed. Val, how about the Kolgor sector operation? How far's Ranthar Jard gotten toward locating one of those wizard trader timelines? Not very far. Vol admitted. He has it pinned down to the subsector, but the belt seems to be one we haven't any information at all for. Never been any legitimate penetration by paratimers. He has his own hagiologists, and a couple borrowed from Outtime Religious Institute. They've gotten everything the slaves can give them on that. About the only thing to do is start random observation with boomerang balls. Over about a hundred thousand timelines, Zasta Alv scoffed. He was an old man, even for his long-lived race. He had a thin nose and a narrow, bitter mouth. And what will he look for? Krautha with guns, Tortha Karf told him, then turned to Val. Can't he narrow it more than that? What have his experts been getting out of those slaves? That I don't know to date. Val looked at the clock. I'll find out, though. I'll transpose to police terminal and call him up. And Scordran Curve. No, Volthor Tharn. It'd hurt the old fellow's feelings if I bypassed him and went to one of his subordinates. Half an hour each way, and at most another hour talking to Ranthar and Volthor. There won't be anything doing here for two hours. He rose. See you when I get back." Dalla had turned on the telescreen again. After tuning out a dance orchestra and a comedy show, she got the image of an angry-faced man in evening clothes. "'And I'm going to demand a full investigation, as soon as Council convenes tomorrow morning,' he was shouting. "'This 
whole story is a preposterous insult to the integrity of the entire Executive Council, your elected representatives, and it shows the criminal lengths to which this would-be dictator Tortha Karf and his jackal Verkan Vall will go. So long, jackal, Dalla called to him as he went out. End of Part 8